Hey guys, uh, John here. So um, I've decided to do like a introduction to Motec, if you will. Uh, just you know the basics, uh, you know where to get the software, how to install it, um, what to look for kind of in it uh, while you're in it, and then maybe just do like a pick a track and a fix setup, and do like a two, three, maybe four episode thing on on like different parts of the setup to focus on to you know get it where you need at like it won't be like the end all or be all or anything so if you're already using Motec uh, you chances are maybe you're, you're probably not gonna learn a whole lot maybe pick up a thing or two I don't know but this is more focused for people I mean that don't use it I mean sometimes friends of mine will be working like an hour or two on a setup and they're just like hey like I can't get this you know to turn or whatever and then i run it through telemetry for like two laps and i already know what's wrong with it so it's just a very very useful tool that anybody that does cup car or i mean even road uh should know how to use at least like to the very basics so this is more or less what i want to cover with that and then uh yeah like pick a track and a setup and then just go through like making it better like the the big things or whatever so we're not going to go like into like uh you know what kind of shocks or that kind of stuff we're mainly going to look at like the splitter uh the tires and uh, maybe uh the suspension like the the um the crossway that kind of stuff so very very basic entry level stuff uh nothing too complicated so uh, we'll get uh, right into it on how to, you know, where to get the software and uh, workbooks and that kind of stuff. So I'll turn the camera off here. So uh, for Motec, and so you just want to Google Motec and then uh, click on the download link here. As the site is a bit slow because it was a bit faster earlier. Q in the in Jeopardy music. Alright, well, that's kind of sucks, I guess. Is my internet working? Yeah. Okay. I guess it's just the site is down. Okay, so when you hit the download, you'll end up on the uh, Motec page. And then uh, on the left-hand side, there'll be a menu. You click on Software. And then in the software, you want to go down to the part that says uh, Data Analysis. And then uh, in there, it's the very first link there. Like, it's i2 Pro, and it has, like, 64 bits in bracket. Like, I'm assuming at this point, this day and age, like, everybody has 64 bits. So if you don't have a 64-bit machine, it's the next one down. So you just go ahead and uh, download that. I don't know if I still have the download file here to show you what it looked like. And I do not. Of course, it just ends up being that uh, when I'm recording the time I have to record this video, the site is down. <laughs> Uh, maybe I should have just stayed on the page where I was, yeah. All right, well, anyway, so you download that. It's going to be a zip file, so you just need to uh, extract it and then uh, run the installer. So, again, once you're on Motec, downloads, left-hand side, software, then data analysis, then i2 Pro, and then it'll have 64. It's the very first one in the data analysis. So you go ahead and download and install that one. And then uh, you'll need to pick up this uh, MU uh, program. I'm guessing uh, the guy's name is Patrick Moore who did that. Uh, pretty much the telemetry file that you get from iRacing, Motec uh, does, doesn't know what that file is or you know can't translate. So this program will help uh, make a file that Motec can use. So it's pretty straightforward. Download the uh, executional, uh, executable file, install that, takes two, two seconds. And then uh, once you get that uh, up and running, so it, when you open it up, it's going to look something like this. So every time you uh, do a lap and your telemetry is running, so to turn on telemetry while you're in the sim, in iRacing, 
you do Alt plus L and you'll see on the bottom left there's going to be a little icon that says uh, that the telemetry is running. So I just do a lap or two or whatever. Like just at least one complete lap without wrecking. Uh, just so you can, you know, have a, a full lap to look at every corner and how your car handles uh, throughout the corners. And then, uh, so once you've done that, when you tow out or go to garage or whatever, MU is going to automatically transfer that file for you. So you don't need to do anything at all. You just need to, like, go to the garage and this program will, will convert the file for you. So uh, once you're ready to uh, look at your file, you just start MoTeC. So uh, for MoTeC, uh, I mean, you can just run it like that, but you need a uh, uh, workspace or a project, um, you know, to get some uh, really good uh, readings. I got mine, uh, I think it was this one. Yeah, there's version 7 there, but there's version 8 somewhere. I guess I should have probably, uh, maybe it's this one. Yeah, this, this is it right here. Uh, so I went to workbook database Atlas Motec. And then uh, this uh, Gen 6 one by Peter Chamberlain. And then uh, downloaded this, this file right here. So download, uh, extract it. And then uh, in MoTeC, I see I already have it there, but I'll still show you. So you go file workspace, open workspace. Then you can hit uh, browse. So mine is in downloads, I believe. Yeah. So in downloads, this is the one right here. So we open that up. And then you're like, you can spend some time looking here. You're not going to find anything. Uh, it automatically defaults to our workspace, which is like the new standard, I guess. I don't know. Uh, projects were before my time, maybe. So um, you select. Why can't I do maybe if I select import then? Yeah, okay. So select import. I guess that's important. And then um, and then in the bottom here for the file type, you change that to a project and then the project is there. So you click open. It's gonna put it in here. So you just select it and click okay. So there you go. So now you got uh, MoTeC running, MU running, hopefully you've already done the lap and you got a telemetry file. And we get where our project going. And then uh, it automatically went to the splitter because that's where I had it before. That's what we're going to focus on, like, the uh, next episode, I guess. We can call them, call them that. Because, um, I mean, that's, like, the main thing you need to look at. Um, so we'll just go ahead and open a file here at random. So as you see here, uh, some of them have, like, the track layout next to it and, and like, all the workspaces are very very different so once you sort of get an idea of of like what you're looking for or that kind of stuff like i encourage you to well i guess i could strongly encourage you to download like all the, the projects and the workspaces that you can see and uh, find one that works uh, good for you unfortunately i can't share mine because uh somebody uh gave it to me and um I guess it's a fairly uh, complex process that went into making it. So uh, the guy in particular doesn't want it uh, shared or some information uh, going out. So I respect that. I mean, it's it's about uh, keeping some secrets or whatever. But for all intents and purposes of this um, this video, uh, I mean, we're going to look at very uh, basic things that you can get on any workspace. Uh, that there is out there. So uh, once you get your file loaded, oh, but I, I also I should mention like when you first open it, like it's not going to point in the right direction. So you'll have to navigate to your uh, iRacing folder and select telemetry to open it up. 
And then when you want to look at your lap, you just hit the play button there, and it's going to roll around. So as you can see, I'm entering turn one here. And and if you look there, you can obviously you can see where my break point is. And right here, I'm, I'm turning because you see my right my right uh, front is like right at the asphalt almost. So you can just go through. Uh, so obviously, I, I've already put some work into this one because it's, it's not bottoming out maybe on breaking a little bit yeah initial break but I, that's the way as long as it just stays there for like a fraction of a second uh it's all right you can't adjust for uh you know the braking pressure i mean you can but sometimes you just need to hit the breaker hard so i was trying to do a hot lap there i think that's what it was but anyway uh that's the main thing that we're, we're going to be uh looking at the next time is uh how to read uh the the splitter so obviously in the fixed set like you know they're usually like well above the ground to be safe that kind of stuff uh I'll show you like how to bring it down uh you know like what what's so when you adjust it then what things that you're going to change that are going to affect that so you're going to have to to check it like pretty much like every time i do a practice session my telemetry is always running and then uh like I, I don't always look at it right away but like it, it's always there if i'm curious about something like it's recorded every single lap that i've done so i can go back to you know like oh i you know this this run i did something and i want to check if, if that's going to work or whatever so I, I can always uh come back to it so depending on which one that you get like i i wasn't i didn't do too much of a big search here i just look for something that had like decent right heights telemetry that would be uh, easy to follow, but uh, some of them have like oh okay I guess it does have it okay, so uh, you see there's like the tire temps like this is there's like way too much information there. I mean it's all right because I know what I'm looking at, but I mean if you're just starting out that could be a bit confusing there. So I mean mainly like you see like the right heights that we were looking at like the splitter and stuff they're right here. You can see that it's really low, like almost bottoming out here. Uh, another good thing that you can check is the tires. We'll cover that in another thing, like what to look for for the tires or whatever. But, I mean, uh, essentially, uh, you know, that's the direction I guess I'm going to go with this. I'm, I'm really winging it at this point. Like, it's just going to be uh, the basics. So, um Let's see, did I forget to cover anything? I don't think so. Yeah, okay. To get this webcam to come on there eventually. There we go. Yeah, so uh, that's going to be it. Um, if you think I'm missing something or, or you saw something or anything at all, like I'm really open to suggestions, uh, just leave a comment and uh, a like if you uh, like this type of thing. Uh, I'm just starting out, so, you know, stuff doesn't look very professional or whatever, but I'm just, I, I kind of like enjoying this on, on my time off, so, I mean, um, so I'm really open to, you know, uh, suggestions on the type of video uh, one would like to see, or, you know, whatever it is, like, I plan on maybe doing, like, a, a track guide, you know, for, like, uh, I know that some people already do like a hot lap type of thing, but for me, it'd be more more about like how to drive it for a long run or short run or uh, doing a pit entry and and you know exiting pits. Like I know exiting pits is is pretty straightforward, but like this track here at Indy, I see people coming out of pits like all wrong all the time. So or just a general break points for pit entry because not everybody practices. So anyway, anyway. I guess what I'm saying is that I'm open to anything if you have uh, any suggestions. And uh, that's going to be it for this video. I'm definitely going to do w one other uh, sometime this week. If I don't know when, unfortunately. It depends on what kind of, like what my, my schedule will look like after tomorrow. So I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. But uh, subscribe to be sure you get notified uh, when the next video come out. And uh, thanks for watching.